I'm so happy to be in your presence in this, this morning. And uh, Marina, like your story was so touching, and I'm so sorry for what you're passing through. Just know that everything is going to be all right one day. Today, uh, you know, like most of our students have talked about their, where they, uh, they came from, who they really are, and what they do. And I could see that most of them are so proud of what they do. Myself, I want to talk about my culture. I want to know about where I came from, what we do. I know that for the past few weeks, you always see me like a demigod and <laughs> other things like that, which I won't mention. But today, I will be talking about the, the largest, the African largest and richest culture, Yoruba. You know, many of the problems we have in this world today are due to misunderstandings. When you learn about another culture and see why others do what they do, you know, like it is easier to understand them, you sympathize with others, and it will be hard for you to justify things like hatred, war, when you learn where other people are coming from. Yoruba people, back a little bit. Oh, yeah. This how Yoruba people, where I came from. This is how we dress. This is our culture. This is how we look like. And you can see the difference. And sometimes ago when I was researching, I could see like some what are Americans who are so proud of <laughs> my culture? You can see them. Not that they are just wearing it for fun, they were even studying the Yoruba culture. So, who are the Yorubas? What is the origin? Yoruba people came from a descendant called Odudua. Odudua is the father of all Yoruba, and the, the Yoruba people has been in existence since seventh century so this is our father our great great grandfather the descendant the, uh, like he's a king uh, i like to just say he was the king of kings all the kings we have he was the father of all and mention of kings kings are the superior judge they are the master they are the head in those days we don't have any judge like um, local judge or something like that, real county judge, which depends on our king. Our king tells us what to do. And through that, king tells, like, tells us what we do, but Oracle tells the king what to tell us. This is uh, an herbalist, you know, and this is Oracle. What is Oracle? Oracle is a form of um, shrine. People, go, people worship it and it tells them what to do, but not everyone can do it. We have some specialized people called herbalists that do, like, like does, does it. Now, I'm going to talk about taboos in Africa, what we do and what we don't do. It's a taboo for us to sit on a mortar. This is a mortar. Anytime someone sit on this mortar they will just like it's a taboo you don't have to do it that person will face the consequence let me tell you the location or where to find yorubas in nigeria you can find yoruba people in oh no all this area yoruba people can be found there oh no you buy them i better put out a Lagos, you can find Yoruba people there. Now, bearing of a mission is a very, very important thing in Africa. I know most of you might, might have heard it, like, why is it so important to have a mission? It's because of continuity. And mission makes their father proud. Azumi I'm a king, it's a must for me to have a king, like to have a son, an apparent heir to continue my royal tree or my royal lineage. That's why you can see them as a father having a lot of male kids more than the female kids. 
So if 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 you have a, if you have a, if you married and your wife doesn't bear like a male for you, just female, 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 female. That's what prompts most of the guys or most of the, our people or Yoruba people to marry second wife. Talking about marrying polygamous, this is a, this is a father, a man, a Yoruba man having three wives. They can have more than three wives, they can have like four wives, six wives. <laughs> okay, and, <I> yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> that makes them like, they, they believe that that makes them proud, that makes them powerful. You can see how buoyant the man is. Now, what the kind of job they do, Yoruba people are so talented. Like they are multitask, they are so blessed. Talking about education is kind of low, but what did they do? They specialize in agriculture, farming, cocoa production, fishing, and making of pot. Can't you see? Isn't that beautiful? So from the start to this and to this, see all the design. It's so beautiful. They have been doing it for a while, and they are so blessed. And that's how they make their money for a living. Now, talking about drums. Drums is a specialized, like, uh, let me just say, equipment to recognize the Yoruba people. Whenever you see this, this is called gongo. Can someone say gongo? Gongo. Gongo. Gongo is a talking drum. If you ask me, you, like, Marina, I can just say, Marina. You know, it's a talking drum. I can even like eulogize you, tell you, like, make you happy through the beating of gong gong. You can see this wife, huh? like the white lady, she was so, so happy, like, when they are beating the talking drum. So maybe one day I will bring the talking drum to the class. Uh uh. It was a fight with a lion or a tiger. That's the tribal mark. Another tribal mark. I know what you think. Your thought was, did you fight with a lion? <laughs> no, he didn't. One way of recognizing Yoruba people around the world is through their tribal marks. This is one of it. You know, they believe that this tribal mark made them significant, made them beautiful, and in those centuries, like 18th century, 19th century to 20th century, is a must for some people to have tribal marks. I know you want to ask me, why don't I have it? Let us leave it for another day. <laughs> All right, another thing is how we greet. Greeting is so important in Yoruba land. You know, this is how we greet. The male will prostrate, while the female will kneel down to greet elderly people. And you can see how these people are greeting the king. They were prostrating. So whenever you see Yoruba people, you know, sometimes when they prostrate or when they bend down, no, they are not crazy. That is how they <laughs> greet in Africa. Ooh, you need dressing. <laughs> dressing, like I've said earlier, is another thing Yoruba people are so happy to wear. Like, this is Agbada. We call this Agbada. And for the, uh, the man, or let's just say the Yoruba men, we wear Agbada with Fila. The one at the top is called Fila. Calf. You can just, you can just say calf in English. Then this is Agbada, the, uh, the Yoruba women will wear Iro and Buba with Gele, head tie, Gele. Look at this, my friends, like, they are, like I've always said, they are so proud of Yoruba culture. And this man has so loved the way he wore the Akun. We call this Akun, the red thing on, on his neck, we call it Akun. You know, like whenever you see Yoruba, whenever you see people dressed like this, you will know that, uh-uh, they are from... Yoruba in Nigeria. Now, the food we eat, we eat, you know, we don't just eat any food. I understand, like, you know, when I came to America, it was so difficult for me to adapt to, like, the way we eat. He took me to McDonald's, I was like, really? McDonald's? <laughs> Get me something better. <laughs> you can see, this is what we call Inyo, we call this Inyo. And this is all bear for. And how did they make this? This is they make this through yam, they peel it, boil it, then you will see the mortar, you know, like pounding it, pounding it, 
But now in America, we don't really have the mortar. You have the pounder yam, right? But in Africa, we have to do it like this, pounding it to it stones like this. And if I see the white lady, she was so proud doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, marriage is another thing that is very, very important. You know, like in those days, our parents make sure that every woman that get married have virgin. Though things have changed now in 21st century, but in those days, marriage are so unique. And it's so, talking of uniqueness, it's so unique to the extent that the man has to go and ask for that lady and the marriage through her parents. He has, to, he has to go with a lot of gifts right there, like yam, you know, like a lot of things, pull out and a lot of things like that. So it's not easy to even get married in Europe. And once you get married, it's so unique. Other people will be so proud of you that you get married. In conclusion, Yoruba culture is the largest and richest culture in Africa. The Yoruba people do a lot of things which make them unique and outstanding. And I want to tell you today, I'm so proud of where I came from. And forever and ever, I will be proud of Yoruba people around the world.